I find it very irritating that even though individuals like Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib helped deliver Michigan and Minnesota to Joe Biden, they're kind of discounted. Like the things that they say about policy, they're brushed aside. Like we saw Obama call out this slogan of defund the police, criticizing them basically inadvertently and indirectly. But individuals like John Kasich, who failed to deliver Ohio to Joe Biden, they're propped up as uh, arbiters of truth in the Democratic Party. And this Republican supposedly is supposed to tell the Democratic Party what they should and shouldn't be doing. Meanwhile, he should be more concerned with the Republican Party. He was driven out of his own party by the far right. So now what he wants to do, since he's no longer welcome in his party, is remake the Democratic Party in his own image. But thankfully for John Kasich, it already is basically in his own image. You have more individuals like Joe Manchin and Dianne Feinstein that are closer to him ideologically than you actually do have leftist individuals. But nonetheless, in an interview with CNN, they asked him, you know, um, what he thought about the Democratic Party, what they should be doing, you know, the, the thing that they usually ask him as if, we should be taking into account what he says. Uh, and of course, he's going to say something that is incredibly wrong and insufferable. Take a look. I do want to ask you about the future direction of the Democratic Party for a second, because President Obama did it really in, had an interesting take on the future of the party in a new interview with Peter Hamby on Snapchat. Let me play just a bit of it. We stick so long with the same old folks and don't make room for new voices. You know, the fact that an AOC only got, what, three minutes or five minutes. Good evening, bienvenidos, and thank you. When you know she speaks to a broad section of young people who are interested in what she has to say, even if they don't agree with everything she says, new blood's always good. New blood's always good. What do you think about that? Well, I think he was just, he was asked a direct question and he didn't want to take a swipe at her, but he also said something very interesting in that interview, and that is using these slogans like defund the police or Green New Deal, he says they're snappy slogans that only appeal to people that agree with them. You're an Indiana girl. You know, imagine going over there to Indiana and starting to try to promote a platform about defund the police. Even Congressman Clyburn from South Carolina, uh, the, you know, the African-American leader who really saved Joe Biden's bacon down in South Carolina by Biden winning the primary, said he thinks this kind of language around defunding the police probably cost a congressional race in South Carolina. So on one hand, I think he's trying to say, yeah, we need new ideas, we need new voices. I happen to agree with that. But he's also at the same time saying, use these slogans like defund the police or green, new green deal, or which labels socialist and all that other stuff. I think it absolutely hurt the Democratic Party. And I said on, on election day, well, whenever we were announced the winner here on CNN, I said it was the hard left that I thought put the put the uh, Joe Biden's uh, ability to become president in jeopardy because people these cultural issues, Kate, in our rural areas, our towns where the factories are forgotten uh, all across the country, down in, in Miami, Dade and South Florida. These issues of culture really matter to voters. And I think it's a struggle inside the Democratic Party. So what we're seeing here, what he's speaking to really is a double standard that politicians and the media, they just, they never acknowledge because the Republican Party, they can support election losers, even though a majority of Americans support keeping abortion legal and same-sex marriages. It is in the Republican Party's platform to repeal same-sex marriage, to make abortions illegal. But yet nobody speaks to how much of a political loser that is for Republicans. Nobody speaks about how unpopular it is to deny the reality of anthropogenic climate change. It's always what is a good policy that we talk about whether or not that's an election loser. It's almost as if corporate media and these politicians don't want to support policies because their donors and advertisers wouldn't like them getting behind something that actually is popular. So, I mean, if you're going to care about what is or isn't popular, let's be consistent. Why aren't we talking about how not supporting Medicare for all is an election loser? As we saw in this last election, any incumbent Democrat who did not support Medicare for All lost their race, whereas incumbent Democrats that supported Medicare for All won their races. Why aren't we having this broad conversation in the media about how not supporting Medicare for All is an election loser?
Well, because you're a big pharma, health industry advertisers wouldn't like that. And the donors to Democrats in the health industry wouldn't like that conversation as well. So we kind of narrow the scope of that conversation to cultural issues and issues that don't necessarily offend our donors and advertisers. And that's why we see this double standard perpetuated. And it's infuriating. It is infuriating because if John Kasich was serious about what is popular or not popular, you think he'd be focusing on his party, which has been taken over by the far right and literally drove him out. But instead, he's more concerned about the Democratic Party. Does that make sense to you? Go fix your own fucking party before you try to fix the Democratic Party. Your input is not needed because we already have countless Republicans in the Democratic Party, Joe Biden being one of them. Now, until the media starts talking about how making abortion illegal is a political loser or taking away healthcare during a pandemic is a political loser, I don't really have the patience to listen to them pontificate about what is or isn't a political loser. I don't want to hear them talk about how defund the police is unpopular because they're not being serious. They're not good faith actors here when they're having this conversation. Now, I have to talk about how Obama, uh, they played a clip of an interview with him where he criticized older Democrats for taking up too much time at the DNC convention, and AOC was only given, you know, a few minutes. Obama, do I have to remind you who you are? You're Obama. You're the guy who made a phone call and ended the presidential campaign of the candidate that was supported overwhelmingly by young people. So for him to continuously say, we, we need to get out of the way, get out of the way, older politicians need to make room at the table for these, you know, new up-and-comers, you keep saying that, but you're not taking your own advice. So I'm not going to make this about Obama because I already made my video criticizing Barack Obama. But here's the thing. The Democratic Party, they have institutional incentives to not want to change. Donors from spe special interests. That is what's keeping them from supporting popular policies like Medicare for all or legalizing recreational cannabis, not some ideological differences. So let's get that straight. But the most important thing that I want to say about this, as trivial as it sounds, is that nobody should be taking anything that a union buster and Republican is saying about the Democratic Party's politics. Like what he says about the Democratic Party Nobody should be taking it seriously. Had he delivered Ohio to Joe Biden, maybe you could say, all right, well, I mean, he, he helped deliver this victory to the Democratic Party. Maybe we should listen to some of what he says and take it with a grain of salt. You couldn't even deliver the state that you were the governor of to Joe Biden. So why would we care about the advice that you're offering to Democrats? So that's the most important thing I could say. Nobody cares what you think, John Kasich. Go away. You're irrelevant politically. Beta male, not a beta male.